Um, my name is Oren. Um, I'm from the INCD, the Israeli National Cyber Directorate. Um, it's the first time I'm presenting, so I'm, I'm a bit excited. I'm sorry. Um, I'm the CTO of the INCD. Um, I'm going to give you uh, 60 seconds about uh, what does the CTO uh, do. Um, apart from the day-to-day -day of the INCD, which is dealing with uh, events and making uh, Israel a safer place, we have uh, two future-looking functions. One is a far-looking function, which is uh, our uh, academic institutes. Um, we fund uh, six or seven cyber centers in the universities. And this is intended to be as a long-term uh, uh, research. And apart from this, we have um, kind of a mid-term uh, research, which is what the CTO does. And uh, the goal here is to look on uh, infrastructure uh, technologies which are two or three years ahead and see how they can serve us. Yeah, can have Where is it? Is it working? Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm basically going to talk about uh, what we call the connected uh, hospital. We have a, a running program which is uh, what we call the, the safe hospital, which is the current hospital, and we are currently looking, one of our projects is uh, thinking about uh, the connected hospital, which is the next generation hospital. Connected devices, home hospital, these kind of technologies. Um, there's a mixture of uh, challenges, I'm not going to go over this. I'm going to focus on these four challenges. By no means they are the, the most uh, intense or the scariest. Uh, I think one of the most uh, interesting observation uh, I had is when I talked to one of the managers of the hospital and we talked about cyber threats and the chance of people dying and he said, you know, people die here every day. So um, it was news to me. So let's talk about a little about uh, these challenges. The ecosystem is, in Israel at least, is like this. We have the hospitals. Some of them are private, some of them are government, some of them are very advanced, some of them are not. Some of them have a lot of funding, some of them have zero money. Inside the hospital, of course, you have the IT system, and you have the administration where you register things and keep track of uh, patients. We have uh, the outpatient clinics. Sometimes they are a part of the hospital, sometimes they're outside the hospital. We have pharmacies inside the hospital, inside JGMOs and standalone ones. We have these kind of labs, research labs. We have the equipment manufacturers and their third party cloud. I'm going to talk a bit about this. And we have, of course, the HMOs. And we have the home. So this is the, the complex ecosystem. It's governed by our regulator, which is the, the health ministry. But it's very hard for him to keep track of everything. It's very complicated to talk with the private hospital, which has a lot of money and is very advanced. So there, it's, it's different, a very differentiated market here. So let's, let's talk a bit about uh, what we call device provisioning. Okay, device provisioning is our ability to see and know w which device is it. So this is Joe. We call him patient zero. Joe has some kind of uh, I don't know, a glucose testing apparatus, whatever. He could have a pacemaker and he could have a smartwatch, which is starting to emerge as a kind of a paramedical device. It's going to help you with uh, lowering your insurance. It keeps track of what you do. These devices either communicate through your mobile phone or they have some kind of a mobile technology of these sorts, Bluetooth, LoRa, whatever. And this is basically the challenge. So this guy, Joe, goes into the outpatient clinic to be fitted with some kind of uh, glucose tester. And we're starting to ask ourselves questions. What device ID are we going to use? Are we going to use the device ID which is printed on the device? We don't know which this device ID. We have no control of this. Uh, how can we create a certificate to be able to track this device? Okay, where are we going to store this? Are we going to store this in the hospital? Um, or not? And how are we going to share this information? Why is this interesting? Because later on, Joe is going to go home. 
And he's going to use his mobile phone or tablet or whatever to use his device to communicate with the third party cloud. I don't know if you're aware of this, but your device usually stores data and then transmits it, not to the hospital, but to the medical company that made the device. So how is it going to identify itself? How is it going to follow up on the certificate? When he goes to his regular doctor in the NGO, same issue here. Okay? How is he going to identify himself against the, the HMO systems? Remember, he was given this device at a hospital, which is a different place, a different network. So our thinking process here, and I'm going to share the thinking process, it's a, an ongoing project which we want to uh, establish, is to utilize 5G network uh, to address some of these issues. Um, 5G networks, I'm pretty sure everyone here, it's like the, bzz, the, the next best thing. It's going to solve every problem in the world. So, uh, of course, we're going to use it here. Why is it interesting for us from a couple of per perspectives? I'm not going to go into the uh, built-in security measures of 5G because it's obvious. Um, what's interesting for us is that 5G can help us with provisioning meaning uh, managed subscribers, which are not necessarily mobile, okay? Which is, it's not a new feature on 5G. It was already 4G, but it's, it's got a beefed up on the 5G domain. Um, we're going to use a different mechanism called network slicing. Um, it's basically the ability for you uh, to manage a, a network as a service. So the, the hospital could have his own uh, network. Why is it important? Because on your own network, you can manage your own subscribers. Um, and this is, I think, from my perspective, it's a new business here, so it could be interesting. So um, how is it going to work? We're going to put this kind of uh, connectivity gateway device inside the, the hospital. It could be uh, any kind of device which will get information from the medical devices, and it has its own 5G plugin talking to the network. Okay, so the connectivity device he is going to be the one that uh, provisions the device against the network and provides certificates. So now we have an external place managed by the hospital which stores uh, the provisioning information. Okay? The network slice. Um, the network slice basically is our ability to create a network divided by our own parameters. We can decide that the network is only geographical, meaning this network is going to cover only the hospital. We can decide that the network is uh, only IoT devices, meaning we're going to give it a speci specific profile based on IoT devices. But this is one of the features. The whole idea is that the, the hospital manages this uh, slice. Okay? And then what happens, basically, anywhere this guy goes, if he's at home, or he goes to uh, the HMO, or he's got to go to a kind of emergency situation, he goes to a different hospital, of course, it's better for him, for the, the, the caregiver to access his information, which is on his device or historical information, to give him better care, and not start doing all kinds of tests on him. Um, so what will happen, basically, is we're going to connect to the database, Okay, verify that this device is valid. Take the subscriber identity. Okay, and this way, anywhere you go, you can provide your own certificate and your own device information. Okay, this is the combination of uh, 5G and uh, IoT. Second issue is device management. Uh, we've heard before the nice uh, stories, and, and this is a very complicated world. And uh, we try to look at this and we say, this guy... Okay, so there's a problem with one of the devices. What do you do? Do you deploy a patch? Do you, what do you do? You call him in, like a, a car? So it's very complicated to, to know what to do exactly at this time. Because he's not there. We're not sure about what kind of uh, uh, version he has. What's the implication of deploying this kind of uh, uh, um, patch or fix or whatever? And if we look at the hospital, again, same problem here. Okay, so we have a problem with one of the devices. Um, how do we patch it? As, as my colleague said, 
it's five seconds or five minutes? Okay. Uh, as my colleagues uh, said before, uh, quite righteously, sometimes to fix a device meaning to swap it. Okay, so you go to the hospital, you have machines that are running on XP or, uh, or DOS, God forbidden, and you can't upgrade it. You have to change the whole CT or the whole device, which is, is very expensive, and it's working. It's not a problem with the device. Uh, I don't know how often, but the question is that once you need an upgrade, what do you do? Okay, what, what do you do? Let's say that you uh, technically agree to do uh, an update. How do you over the air update, or not over the update, uh, a patch? And if this guy is, is abroad this minute. So again, we think about uh, 5G as a solution for this. We're separating this into two issues. One is the IMT management system. It's the system that, that uh, is in charge of managing the IoT devices. And the network is a carrier. So again, what we're thinking is, once we identify a problem, uh, I'm assuming this hospital has some kind of a SOC solution. Um, so once the SOC decides on, okay, there's a problem, this is the action we need to do. He uses the IMT management system to deploy the patch wherever the solution or the guy is at. So we can use the 5G to deploy the solution wherever the solution is. Um, by the way, I'm talking about 5G, but even if you talk to the hospital guys, they like the 5G solution inside the hospital because it gives them the ability to lose the wires, it gives them the ability to manage uh, uh, networks uh, without uh, hardware. So it's gonna solve these problems inside the hospital as well. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, but as I said, we're looking on, on solutions which are going to be two or three years. I'm going to talk a bit about the 5G we want to do today. Um, data governance. Um, okay, so let's say we solve the device identification problem. Now we need to identify the user, who it is. On some cases, it's going to be easier because the user is more connected to the device. If I have a glucose tester, it's probably on me. But some of these devices, the users rotate. So uh, uh, blood pressure, which uh, is in the emergency room, or a CT device, the device has an ID, but the user are always swapping. So we need some kind of mechanism to control this. Okay? Um, think of the day-to-day -day activities. Okay, so this guy is gathering information inside his uh, device, he transmits it to the equipment manufacturer, okay? When he goes to the doctor, this is what actually happens today. The doctor pulls the information from the cloud, okay? And can we trust this? One question, it's a basic question, can we trust this data? We have no control of this cloud, we don't know what's going on there. Okay, it's not part of uh, our network, it's not governed, it's outside of Israel. And uh, this is just an example of a glucose tester, but think of, uh, of a device which could affect your allergies. So if by this kind of data uh, cycle, your allergy would be erased from your medical record, three, five, six months later, you could be affected. Um, when we talk about the hospital, which gathers information, they all collect data, they do uh, AI. This could be an internal or external solution, so they could be sharing the information. Same problem here. Can we trust the data? Can we de debug the data? Debugging, I mean, can we take the data, do some kind of analysis on it, and then uh, six months later, we want to make sure that our analysis is right. How can we trace back, go back, and see if the, the data is accurate? Remember, we're sharing it. So one solution we thought about is using blockchain. Um, in this scenario, basically what we wanted to do is we wanted to take hashes. We wanted not to store the data itself on the blockchain because it's a lot of data, but we wanted to store hashes of the data, share it between hospitals or whatever is processing the, the data, and um, then use it to verify the records. Okay, my time's up, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah.